Hello and welcome to the Fave English podcast, your one-stop shop for Venezuelan football in English, bringing you fortnightly episodes dedicated to the Venezuelan league, the national teams and the myriad of Venezuelan players around the world. Tonight is a special episode of the Fave English podcast because we are live in the flesh with a current Liga Fave player, the scorer of Metropolitanos' first ever goal in the Copa Sudamericana, a player with experience in Spain, Copa America 2021 and part of a golden generation of players at Metropolitanos. We are of course with Christian Laratonda. Christian, thank you very much for being with us or rather for having us into your home. Hi Jordan, uh, Kevin, thanks for the interview and I hope you will, uh, will enjoy it. Thank you very much for having us and as Christian alluded to, I am here with my co-host Kevin Vivas. Kevin, how are you? Yes, very fine to be here. I, I didn't expect to be today because I wasn't with you, but it's a very nice idea to me be here in the first personal podcast and with Christian Arotona in his own house. Own house. Yeah, I asked Christian whether he preferred to do it over Zoom like we uh, normally record our podcasts um, or in the flesh, expecting Christian to, if in the flesh, come to my apartment or meet somewhere. But Christian's very kindly invited us into his home. His mum has made some great coffee and now we're sat in his living room. Very surreal. Not often you get the opportunity to meet professional football players in their own house. So thank you very much again, Christian. So to start, first and foremost, this is a rare opportunity for me to interview a Liga Football player in English without the need of Kevin's amazing translations. So where did you learn your English? Well, I learned by my own. Um... And in the on the school, in I studied in Santo Tomas de Villanueva, so I learned a little bit there. And um, the rest, we playing video games and watching TV, uh, the uh, watching Netflix in English. What kind of programs would you watch on Netflix? Well, I I love the, the series Dark. Um, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Blinders. I love it. I'm watching it. Well, I, I, I'm, don't, I'm don't watching it too. Don't tell me. I'm in the first season. Oh, <laughs> I found it very curious because I've, I've seen for a while like Peaky Blinders trending on Twitter in Venezuela. And then Kevin this weekend told me that he started watching Peaky Blinders, something that's been like a program very popular in England for three years. But to me as an Englishman, to know it's popular in Venezuela is, is crazy. How long have you been watching it for? Well, uh... I don't know, but I uh, um, that I remember I started watching Netflix in English like at the age of maybe sixteen years. So about six years now. Yeah, and as I said in the introduction, uh, possibly the 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 best compliment or the most historic compliment I can give you is at the age of 22, you've already made history for Metropolitanos, of course, being the first ever goal scorer in Copa Sudamericana for the club. How was that, how was that moment for you, somebody that spent many years at the club to, to make that bit of history? Well, it, 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 it's something that when I talk with the people, I always say that it, it's, it's something that I, I can't explain because that feeling, it, it's something that happened what time in your in your in your life but in that moment i i felt the all the stadium was quiet and 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 the ball and the ball was so uh, was going so slowly to the um, into the box into the box and the corner of the box uh, and the corner <laughs> of the box Ben, when when I, I i knew it that was goal i i get crazy like i i, I didn't know what 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 was happening <laughs> yeah what's <laughs> happening and uh, uh, what to, what do what, what i did when, when i when i saw the video i i, I mean like what was what was I do I doing in that moment? <laughs> you know. Yeah, and you've added you've added like goals to your game this season, like for your for your position, like uh, as for those who don't know, Christian plays like defensive midfield and central midfield. 
goals haven't always been like a big part of your game, but you've got quite a few goals this season. Is, yeah, is I, that luck or is it something you've been looking to add to your game? I, I, well, I, that is that I, I was looking for like, well, this season I have, I don't know, if four or five goals because some goal that I made to to Isabe is not code. It hasn't been given to you? No, because uh, Forero... Uh, uh, Own goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the the was Yes, and, and with, I'm checking on my internet, my phone. But I remember that you are not a player that usually score goal. And so when I watched that goal in life in the Copa Sudamericana, it was like, wow, what a goal! What a goal he made to to put the first goal of Metropolitanos, and it was amazing. I, I remember that maybe he he used his spec, no. Yeah, chess. Yeah, uh, his chess. Sorry, and um, yes, it was amazing. It's a, it's a, it was again academia protocol. Academia right? protocol. Yeah. yeah, and of course that goal uh, kickstarted ultimately getting through that playoff game against Puerto Cabello and into the group stages. What was it like as a as a club? Obviously, it was the first time Metropolitanos were founded in two thousand and eleven, I believe. It was the first time uh, in continental football. So logistically, you had three away games across South America. What was it like to be a, a part of that, and how did the club take on that challenge? Well, we uh, we knew it that we we were a uh, a new team in the in the in the competition. But we expected so much about us. Like we wanted past, uh, past uh, mm -hmm. to the next Advanced. round. Advanced, yeah, yeah. And um, we were we was hoping that uh, we was hoping that was a uh, I don't know how 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 to explain what was that feeling because the first. The first game, we felt like we played like a group, uh, a great, a great first, first, first game. You went two, two goals half. off against Melga. First half. First mm -hmm. half. Yes. Yeah. And the second half was like we don't know what happened. Everything passed too, too fast. And I think it was a, a great experience because we we learn a lot and in in these days we know that we want play play again because we know now the competition and we want give our give our hundred percent and we know if the if we play the next year the Copa Sudamericana or mm -hmm. or the Copa Libertadores. We will put a uh, Venezuela uh, Liga Football in the, in the, in in the top in the in the first one. And the, the football that got you into the Sudamericana, the the football you were playing in in twenty twenty in that tournament towards the end of the year was to me like some of the most impressive football that there was. Jose Maria Moore and Kike Garcia at Aragua um, were my two favorite coaches and my two favorite styles to watch. But then in the Sudamericana, you were coming up against opposition from other South American countries where the, what was required of you as a team was, was very different. What was it like going from knowing that you could play very attacking football and, and take the game to the opponents in Liga Football games in 2020 to having to go and play away in Brazil and, and have to really, really defend? How, how do you prepare for that as a team? And how did Jose Maria Moura, as your, your coach, prepare you for that challenge? Well, uh, as well that you say, uh, Jose Maria is a... Uh, a great, a great teacher because he 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 teach us a lot, a lot. Um, uh, he's he, he's like a uh, your your best your best teacher in your school because he know a lot. Um, uh, the 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 games. The, the game against uh, Paranaense was was so hard, so 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 hard because the 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 week the weeks before uh, af, be, the weeks after the no before before yeah the weeks before the game 
were like, remember guys, this, this is a team that attacks so much, we have to defend a lot, we have to, to be, be prepared to the, to the, 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 the attacking do, to do all that, that they have. And we have that uh, mindset, that man mindset to mm -hmm. the game. Um, I think we we did it so great. The thing was that in some some point of the game we lose that con concentration, and we considered the goal, but we could we could. Uh, we could uh, we could uh, win that 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 game. And even uh, I don't know if that was before or after, but Aragua lost a zero against a Brasilia team in Brazil. So mm -hmm. yes, it was it was gonna be very remarkable if Metropolitanos would have. It was gonna be very remarkable if Metropolitano uh, could have drawn that game. I don't know if that was before. And Metropolitanos was gonna make also a record, a, a big register if they draw in, in Brazil and maybe the first doing that in 20 years or something like that. For a Venezuelan team? Yes, a Venezuelan mm -hmm. team in Brazil. And you spoke, Christian, about knowing for, for next time, being prepared, now you know the competition um, and, and you can approach things from a more, I guess, informed manner. When you look back at uh, your participation in the Sudamericana, you got the, the player of the week, Comable Sudamericana named you player of the week for that, the game that you scored against Puerto Cabello. Can you allow yourself to, to remember that moment fondly and be proud that you had that achievement? Or is it more of a focus on, we could have done better as a team and that's what I want to do in the future? Um, I mean, I was proud because it was a, a record a personal achievement. Yeah, a personal achievement. But I was focused. Uh, uh, I was focused because about the, the the competition. But but because we knew it that the competition would be really 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 hard. So do you know when 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 you have that that two feelings that you are so good with you but you know that you have give give more mm -hmm. because you know that you will need your hundred percent to to get what you want mm -hmm. and you've had that that was ultimately just the beginning of like a very busy year for you we're, we're only in september but you went from playing in the, the Sudamericana and traveling around the continent for away games to ending up being part of the, the national team for Copper America 2021. Obviously, those last days before the tournament began was, were crazy with the, the 13 positive COVID tests amongst the, the players, 17 including the staff, and then a last minute rush to get the, the reinforcements from League of Foot they tested, cleared as, as, as negative for COVID and then getting out to Brazil. How was that experience being with the senior, the senior national team for a major tournament for the first time? Well, that first day were so crazy because we really don't know what, what was happening there because we were there with, with the, the national team, but we was training and separately. separately. And that 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 few days we we've been like oh my god that that that's that is really happened we are in the in the in the Copa America <laughs> that 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 feeling what we we felt in 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 our heart and in our mind was it, it it's something that you couldn't uh, you could not believe I mean yeah. it it's something that you imagine when you are uh, a little boy and you told your parents like hey mom someday i will play the copa america with 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 venezuela did you, did you did you ever have that conversation with your mom do you remember saying that as a kid or yeah, i i i told 
I told uh, to my parents that uh, like when I was I don't know five or six years six yeah. six years old like uh, I was a, a, a little boy yeah, a, yeah. a really little boy and I I told him and and well taking that point I think you were preparing the Monagas match and then suddenly you were in the airport with Bachile, Daniel Perez and Schiavone. That was like a dream. What would you what would you tell him between between yourselves? Yeah, when when we meet in the airport was a a really strange uh, feeling because we were like oh my god you are here i'm here like we are all friends and we have the same dream and we are in we are um, going to brazil to the yeah we are going to brazil you know, tinto. Yeah, cumpliendo nuestro sueño yes and um, and that was a, a really lovely moment you know and the way they the way they spoke about it in the the media and the press i don't know if you were like aware of it at the time um but they were all saying like you, you were the ultimately the replacement for yangel herrera and like to kevin yangel herrera is the the most talented gifted venezuelan player to to be sort of deemed his his replacement did you feel did you feel any pressure or were you just like this is an amazing moment and i'm going to enjoy it I feel like this is a an opportunity to 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 demonstrate what who I am to 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 play with with my with my love. I say my love because the vino tinto is it's it's all what what I want. Like it's like a it's like your mother, your mother, your country. It's something that you love. And um, that's the that feeling you can re replace that that feeling can be replaced because it's something that I I, I repeat that uh, that you felt in when when you are when, when you are a, a, a little guy you are young and uh, did you see what difference of, of what characteristics uh, you could see in the teammates, for example, when you practice with Yangel Herrera, I think you, you practice with Cáceres, with Brujo, did you do? With, with Christian and with Brujo, I, I, I did. With Yangel, ah, you did it. I, did, I did it. Uh, how was the difference of the rhythm of the play, the, the play still, the, the quality? Because I, I, I spoke with Richard Sellis and he told me the difference of the level was very high and he he got used to that level. Do you learn so much of that experience? Yeah, it, it it was so so high, and for example, they they, they think uh, too fast. Mm -hmm. They play too fast. If you do a, a you do a bad movement, and for example, I don't know, you go outside your zone. They immediately they know and they take the and, and they pass the ball there and I think I think what was a, a really good uh, experience and I learned a lot. And it feels like a good a good point to mention um, something that I that I wanted to talk to you about. I feel like Metropolitanos at the moment have sort of like a, a golden generation, possibly one of the the best generations in terms of like coming from a cantera in the league yourself you're not all exactly the same age but yourself Bahachili, Perez, uh, Andres Ferro, Pavon um, and to share that moment with Bahachili and Perez as Kevin already um, picked up on must have been amazing but that must be like a really ambitious group to to be part of all probably with ambitions to to play for the national team to to play in Europe and you're you're all similar ages and you've all come through together is Presumably, there's like a really strong bond be between the four or five of you in that generation that's helped Maria more shape the team around you. Yeah, you um, you say something that uh, you're in the in the correct point. We want play uh, with Venezuela Venezuela team with the Vino Tinto, 
and we want to play outside Venezuela. I mean, in in Europe on in MLS. That we, we have that that dream. Um, only I am two years older than 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 they, but they are all my my greatest friends and we we have the same the same dream that that it it's something that that you that the that you don't you don't find that that in all the people i mean that you you share your 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 dreams with the with the with, with the with your friends and 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 work together yeah, exactly. to yeah to 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 the dreams come true yeah. exactly and but we, we're talking about making it to europe um but you've already had experience in in europe uh, a couple of seasons ago you were with Getafe and, and played games with their second team um and their their under 19s what was that experience like to to have those months in in spain well i can say that i love madrid it's a really 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 good uh, city so i i love madrid i love the people there and i love the the team Getafe too because I don't know when, when I mean in in it's something that, that that you felt you you are there and you 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 felt the the color of the of the shirt and you say I want to give my hundred percent and I want to train in better and always always stay in the in that in that, in that movement um, that 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 was a great experience. And and for example, also you learn something from a type of football. The Spanish football is special. The the touch, the technique, the first touch, etc. Uh, do you do you learn a, a new play style in, in Spain? Something that I can't delete of, of from my mind. It's that in in the trainings we uh, usually we. We did the the trainings doing one touch. Okay. Playing with one touch. Mm -hmm. In the first trainings was so hard for to me. Did did that, but then we I I. You got used to it. Yeah. You got used to doing that. Yes. It, it's probably what what separates me as a as a, a football fan and a football journalist to you as a, a football professional but one thing that i found really interesting about your answer about your time at Getafe is um you know you were there for for less than a year but you said so quickly you felt like the color of the shirt and, and wanting to give your all for me like i'm a southampton fan and i can't imagine ever feeling the same love for another club what what did Getafe do or, or what was it about the environment that made you feel like you, you felt the colours you wanted to give it your all? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was the, the colours, if it was the base camp, if it was the people, but what, uh, or if it was Madrid in general. I don't know what it was, what, what if it was. But the thing that I know when I put that that shirt, uh, I dress when when I dress it that that shirt, I felt that that instinct of I, I don't know to 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 run all the field to to play better to to give my hundred percent. It 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 was it, it was something that ch changed my 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 not change my mind like uh, a focus you know that the come the, the light to me and 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 started that that burned the in the in the heart i, I think and for example you, you started i uh, guess you told me in santo tomas you told here santo tomas de villanueva that's the same school of miko right i think yeah uh, there studied uh, Miku Fedor, Ruben Arocha, este, 
there is another good player I remember. Uh, uh, Miku played yeah. also well in Getafe, which is curious. <laughs> yeah, um, well, Arocha, uh, Ruben Arocha played in the in Real in Madrid. Ah, uh, yes, in, the, in, in, La Cantera. Yeah, uh -huh, La Cantera. Cyprus as well. Uh, how did you start you to play football? How how is the story that that you would tell usually? Well, that that's <laughs> that's so funny because I ha I had a lot of energy and <laughs> my parents <laughs> give you a ball. <laughs> give me a ball and then they they saw me uh, kicking the ball around the apartment and <laughs> they say, oh my god, we have to <laughs> to put it in this boy to play soccer and then I, I, I started to play with Villanueva's team then I played it for, 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 uh, for Talento Franco Ricci mm -hmm, yeah. then I have a really really short uh, pass uh, to, to Estudiantes de Caracas like uh, one year okay. and then I came Metropolitanos. What uh, what football did you watch growing up? Because obviously you had the spelling Getafe and you, you mentioned Madrid being uh, a great city and Kevin saying how the, the football style um, in, in Spain is unique or at least different to Venezuela and for me it was always interesting. Uh, sorry that I, uh, I, I'm stopping you but in that, in that team that uh -huh. I started to play was Robinson Flores. I played with Robinson and with Wilke. I have a picture. Wilke Fariñez. Yeah, with Wilke Fariñez and with Seferino... Bencomo? No. No, Bencomo. Ah, no. Seferino Marquez. Marquez, Seferino Marquez. Marquez. He's playing in UCB. Yes, I have a picture here of him we, uh, when we, he was playing in Santo Tomás de Villanueva and it's with Robinson we, Flores. We, we have a really, a really good a uh, really good team there yeah and now of course you play with Robinson Flores uh, at Metropolitanos and I think he's had a really good season this year yeah this he's, year, he's yeah. caught the eye out, outside South America uh, outside of Venezuela and he's got a really thunderous shot he can really hit a ball hard yeah like really hard. some of his goals have been identical and obviously it's difficult to stop because when that ball drops and he catches it on the volley with his right foot yeah he it's really, it's really, a, a really really special really hard kid him and Jonathan Castillo on the wings I think they play when they play together I think they play really well yeah. um but yeah so, so just circling back to to the question I found really interesting when I was here with with Kevin in in 2019 a lot of uh Venezuela have a lot of football fans but what they don't have is a lot of football fans. I think that's fair to say. Yes, yes Kevin. Of so, as as a kid, what football did you grow up watching, and 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 what football team or teams did you support as a kid? Was it Venezuelan teams and Venezuelan football, or did you watch European football more? Well, I, I, I went to the, to the, I went so much to the to the UCB stadium mm -hmm. and watch the the Caracas game or the the teams that were playing there we, we, I mean I I didn't under, understand what, what what was happening like I didn't like some team mm -hmm. uh, you went to watch football rather than watch yeah, a team I, yeah I, I I I was there because I I, I like I like it wa watch football. Mm -hmm. In the on the TV, I watch uh, I watch so many times Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, I think I like that team when I was young. I'm watching here, and you have a a photo in Talentos Franco Risi. You played uh, with Wilker Fariñez, as yeah. you said. And that's correct. How was him of, of, of children? He was he, very outstanding. Well, and he uh, played outfield when he was a kid, no? Huh? He played outfield. He wasn't a goalkeeper. Yeah. No. Well, the, no, I, I have a, a really good story. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, in uh, on with Villanueva, I played with with, with Wilker uh, in Villanueva, and we was playing uh, uh, the Herbalife Cup, uh -huh. and we was in the 
semifinals and playing I don't remember the team but we draw and we we went to the penalties so they changed the goalkeeper and put and put it uh, put it there uh weaker put it there weaker and he he was playing a forward i think he was uh -huh, forward forward <laughs> and and he he helped us he he uh, he take like he take like three penalties i think yeah so so from forward to the to the keeper in in the in the penalty series <laughs> yeah I even spoke to, when I was speaking to, to Danny Perez and his dad, Leonardo, for an earlier podcast episode, um, Danny played in goal when he was younger too, not for a long period of time, but, but even Danny played in goal once upon a time. How long, how long um, or for how long were you and Danny playing together in, in Metropolitanos? Mm, like three, like three years. Yeah, three years. And how does it, as someone you said before we started recording the podcast, somebody you're really close to, a good friend. How does it, how does it make um, you feel to see him in, in Belgium and potentially playing Champions League football soon? I'm so proud of, of him. He, he's my... I... I wish to him... Mm -hmm. Is that good? I wish... I wish... Wish him I, the best. I wish him the best. He, when when I saw the post in on Instagram, I always have the the, the, the feeling of I mean I, I felt so so proud of him because I, I think he's a really good striker and he ha, he he need that opportunity to to demonstrate that he is the best. And f about your yourself and your own career. Do you, obviously you said you, your biggest love is Vino Tinto and to play for Venezuela, but do you have any particular career aspirations for yourself? Any particular goals you'd want to yeah, achieve? I, I, I want to play uh, to, to, uh, 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 to AC Milan. To, to, to Milan. play for AC Milan. Right. Yeah, I want to play there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my... My Your dream. My, my my it's my dream but that that thing it's like uh, your en, en español sería como como tu amor platónico como platonic love i think Pla <laughs> yeah pl platonic love is like non romantic love i think it's like not a romantic bigger love, than like... romantic something like ritual uh huh <laughs> o sea, hey, 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 el equipo de mis amores yeah yes his lovable team. His, I like it when loves. I like it when when players, not just when I interview players, but when I listen or read interviews with players that are, you know, at the beginning of their career and they talk about their their dreams. So often it's like, oh, I just want to play in Europe. Or I like it when a player has a specific yeah, a specific, specific answer. And yeah. AC Milan is the one you hear. Manchester United. Yeah, yeah. yeah and nice. I found it interesting when, as a, as a Southampton fan, I said earlier when we signed Mayo Yoshida, the Japanese centre back. Um, this was like 2013 and in one of his first interviews in England he just signed for Southampton and somebody asked him like about his career ambitions and he said I want to play for Manchester United and as a fan you're just like what <laughs> <laughs> you just signed for Southampton you're why are you talking about yeah, yeah. Yes, it's very... um, but then he was it's one like, of our, it's like our best coming, players it's like coming I don't know to to hermanos colmenares sorry <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then saying well i want to play in caracas fc <laughs> exactly it's like wow disrespectful <laughs> yeah but then he went he went on to be a, a really good player for us and was very involved with charity work and gave a lot of money to the saints foundation okay. so like he became a cult hero but when that happened to begin with it was like why are you saying this but <laughs> ac milan is a good one Lara, and how would you describe because i i feel that your play style has changed a lot and like before you were like more defensive and high war right, but now you are the player like also got, uh, got in by Chile behind of you. You control the ball, you turn around very well, you pass, you distribute, you you like to dribble with the ball, and so you have like th those sides of your play. How, yeah. But how would you describe your play style? Well, um, I love I love half the ball. I always want to, to take the ball and 
I don't know if, if uh, a short pass or a long pass, but I won it. Um, but the I think that the 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 how to describe my my my, my work is help the team. If I help the team, I will be proud of me because I think that is that is my biggest my aim. My, my biggest aim. Help the team because if that the the team could uh, shine 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 exactly. if the team could shine, I will shine too. That's that's important because um, if I uh, when 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 I when I do that I I, I feel so so proud of, of me um, uh, I think to one of my biggest characteristics that I have uh, uh, a really good re resistance stamina stamina uh, resistance as mm -hmm. well, yes. yeah and that's uh, what do you consider is your best match in your career oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think Puerto Cabello or I don't know. Uh, so Americana. Yeah, maybe the first leg. Yeah, the first leg or. Yeah, yes, that was very. Maybe, good. I don't know. Um, I I I have a lot of of, of great uh, of great games, but that maybe it's because that is. It's near to the. It's recent. It's recent. Yeah, yeah it's better. recent. But also a historic game for not just yourself, but for Metropolitanos. And just to, to finish up, um, I just wanted to, to ask we've got five games left of, of Liga Football, give or take. Some teams have got one more, one less. What is Metropolitanos' aim for these, for these final games? Hopefully, qualify for the next stage and, and get 10 more games. But. What's the ultimate ambition? What What's the most that you're you're hoping for and working towards? Well, the qualifier of to the hexagonal A. That's that's what we are. That, what you're aiming. Uh -huh, your, and of course, course our aim, and that will be like uh, I'm. I'm telling you, we will be in that in that group. In that, the hexagonal way. Yeah. Okay. We will be, we will be there. So for, for those um, who don't know or need familiarizing, the way Venezuelan the league has set up this season is there's three groups with, with seven teams. The top two in each group advance to a hexagonal A, probably best described as like a championship round. There'll be six teams. Everyone will play each other twice. The top two will play the final for the league title. Um, and it's also what's going to determine the four teams to qualify for the Copa Libertadores and then the teams that finish third and fourth in each group will qualify for the hexagonal B um, and only the top two teams out of those six will qualify for the Copa Sudamericana so it really is um, cutthroat whether you qualify for hexagonal A because that will guarantee you either Libertadores or Sudamericana or hexagonal B where you've only got a one in three chance as it stands Metropolitanus is Group is led by Caracas FC. Second is Monagas, and then third is Metropolitanos. Atletico, 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 Atletico Venezuela, one and, for one point. and then fourth and Metropolitanos. Um, and then outside chance of, of Mineros two qualifying for hexagonal B. Um, we've spoken about Mineros earlier in the season, Kevin. Um, how well they've done with a very young team to stay in this debate. But Christian, I wish you and Metropolitanos all the best in qualifying for Hexagonal Wave. Not just because you're here, but anyone that listens or, or reads the English lots. I'm a big fan of Metropolitanos' play style and, and Jose Maria Moore. Um, and yeah, Christian here is, is a key component of a very talented group of young players. So thank you again, not just for recording with us today, but allowing us into your home to do so. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you.